My name is William Disman. I'm a product manager on Terra. And before we get started in our workshop, I want to take the opportunity to discuss a little bit about the vision. How did we come up with Terra? Uh, really, where are we going? And uh, then later today, you'll be able to see uh, a little bit more technical details of what Terra is. But ultimately, the vision is we're building a platform so that biomedical researchers can access data, run analysis tools, and collaborate. So I want to propose a challenge. When you look at uh, life sciences today, it really has transformed into a data science. And uh, how we got here, as since we've been sequencing the, the genome, more and more and more data is available to us. And it's accelerating. Uh, we're collecting more and more uh, genomes, exomes, and the power behind this is, is really uh, transformative. But it, it creates a, a few different challenges for us. Uh, really, there are three major uh, challenges today. One is data is getting so big. It, it's, it's very challenging to manage. Two, uh, it's in a lot of different disparate sources. Uh, every institution has different data. And then three, is it's getting very challenged to collaborate off of this. And so ultimately, how do we uh, get to the next step? How do we evolve and how do we solve with the, uh, these challenges? And modern problems uh, require modern solutions. So uh, really, I, I want to talk a little bit about the power of the cloud. So today, uh, the challenges that I introduced to you really are uh, built within uh, the traditional way of how we've been doing things. But when you look at the cloud, and really the power behind this is that it really brings researchers to the data. So it's a better and easier way to collaborate across a lot of different data sets. It's a lot easier to manage the data. And it's a lot easier to, to share the data. And so it's a centralized location rather than having a lot of disparate sources. And really the goal here is to be conducive of the collaboration and be able to enable the research behind just the growing uh, amount of data that we're collecting. And uh, there's a lot of uh, improvements that we can make here. So let me talk a little bit about uh, how clouds can be elastic. So imagine you're crunching your analysis and you, you, you have a deadline and you're, you're on your computer, you're ready to run your analysis, but you're in a queue now. So everybody is running the same analysis or similar analysis at the same time and there can really be a bandwidth constraint. And so on the left, you can kind of see what a queue looks like. So this is a real graph of our sequencing center and, and, and what it looks like as we're processing the data. And so the beauty behind the cloud is we're able to scale. So no longer are we having to wait in queue to get our analysis done. We can get this done on the fly. And there's another aspect of this is uh, if we're not using our compute power, we, we simply don't have to pay for it. And so it's a lot easier to scale. And, and that's really uh, part of the beauty behind the cloud. So as we look about the challenge of a growing number of data sets, as we look about uh, the vision of where the cloud is going and, and how can it help, uh, a number of folks got together and, and had a vision. Well, how can a lot of different institutions collaborate and really invigorate uh, the, the life sciences? And so a vision for the data biosphere was created. And our own Anthony Philippakis was uh, involved in this. And the idea was to create a vibrant ecosystem and there's a number of different principles involved as we build this ecosystem. 
uh, four major ones. How can we scale this? You know, uh, one, we want to make sure that it's modular, really easy for collaboration there. It's community driven. Uh, a lot of different institutions want to work on, on the same data. They really want to build that collaboration. And open, the nature of what we're doing, is we, we want it to be open source. We want others to be able to come in, contribute, and be able to uh, grow with us. And standards-based, which I'll, I'll go over a little bit uh, about, about this. So here's the ecosystem behind the data, uh, the, the data biosphere. There's a number of institutions that are collaborating actively uh, from Vanderbilt, University of Chicago, University of California, Santa Cruz, Verily, who's just across the street, and us. And here is our vibrant ecosystem uh, built behind the standards of the Global Alliance for Genomics and Health. So uh, how can we actually all collaborate, though? So uh, as we look into what this ecosystem is, all of these different institutions have different projects that we're working on. And it ranges from the Human Cell Atlas, uh, the All of Us with the NIH, uh, even things such as the NIH Data Commons. So with all of these different projects, really, how do we collaborate? How, how do we bring this all together? And that is, is Terra. Terra is the centralized way for all of the, these data to come together. So to introduce Terra, it's, it's really great to step back and, and look at what are the four major things that we're looking to drive? Well, one, when you come to Terra, you're able to find the data. And, and we'll go over these in the workshops later. Uh, then. Once you're able to see the data that is right for you, you're able to access it, get the right permissions. And we'll talk a little bit about security, which is very important in this. Uh, analyze, so you can do it in a very easy, uh, interactive manner. And then sharing, like I had said, really we, we really want to an enable collaboration. So how do we do this? So, Let's step back. Let's look at that first step in the funnel. How, how do you find your data? You could easily go today and look at a number of data sets that are very powerful. So you could be looking at the ENCODE project or 1,000 genomes through the NHGRI. Uh, you can look at AMP Parkinson's disease. These, these are just a, a small amount of what's at our fingertips. Uh, but you're able to just go right in and easily access these powerful data. And you're also able to share. So when, when you're able to uh, complete your research, you're able to uh, introduce this new data set. Now, now that we're finding the data, and we'll go over into further detail of the power behind uh, the different tools that we have with this data, but, but here's just a, a small list of what we're able to do. So now, next we want to analyze the data. And again, uh, the power behind uh, the cloud, the power behind what uh, Terra is working on is it can be very interactive. And we'll go over Jupyter. So uh, for those that are not familiar, with, with Jupyter Notebooks. It's a, it's a great way to have an interactive analysis, uh, share the data in a very collaborative manner, and it's, it's a very uh, easy uh, ecosystem to set up. Now, we should also talk about uh, workspace a little bit. You can, you can picture this as a somewhat of a, a sandbox of doing your research, and you're able to pull in uh, your analysis all through your sandbox, but I, I want to show you uh, before we get into the details what that looks like. So here's an example. You're able to quickly do all of your documentation of this and have a lot of different abilities to organize 
where you're going with it, and uh, run your analysis. So I talked a little bit about notebooks. Here's a great example of what an interactive notebook looks like. You could run it in R, you can run Python, all within this simple collaborative tool. Now, you're able to also uh, see what we call a showcase. There's a lot of different workspaces that are at your fingertips. And you can see what different uh, research is being done, so you don't have to start from scratch. You can get some great examples to, to get running with. And here's just a small example of the different types of examples uh, that will be seen. Now, the last part of here is collaboration. I, I wanted to uh, mention, and, and, I'll, and I'll continue to talk about uh, privacy. So as you build your workspaces, they're private by default. But it's fairly easy to give others that are collaborating the right permissions to do uh, what's necessary to run the research. And you're able to easily control who's accessing this data. Now, it's also very flexible. There's a few modes of computation that you're able to leverage. So you're able to build just one large virtual machine, like I had mentioned. You can run R or Python in your uh, interactive notebooks. Or you could do larger scale analytics. You can leverage BigQuery. Uh, or let's say you have a lot of jobs and it might take a while. Well, you could do batch computing. So very flexible in this manner. So when you, when you look at uh, what's behind the scenes, we're certified FISMA moderate, which really means that uh, we're leveraging the utmost in, in uh, security and, and privacy measures. Uh, and, and we're able to configure our resources appropriately, so, so you're able to, to work within this space. Now, last is, well, how much does this cost? It, it's actually free. If, if you want to get started, run, run some samples, get, get your hands dirty on uh, research. Uh, like we started in the beginning of this workshop, you can actually get free credits. Uh, you're eligible for $300 worth of uh, cloud compute. And this applies for a period of about 60 days. Uh, and in the future, when we talk about cost, well, you're only paying for uh, your cloud compute, so for storing your data and egress, et cetera. So that's a little bit about the vision of how Terra came to be the data biosphere and a little bit more about what we'll be discussing today. So in conclusion, uh, really what the, uh, we're trying to accomplish with, te with Terra we want to make sure that we're spending time doing our science and not wrangling the software. All right, thank you. Any questions? You, you were mentioning security and FISMA, which I'm not familiar with, but one example of a real problem is called DDF. Are you familiar with DDF? No. Okay. So the question was, you know, does Terra give me a way to Access and store DBGAP files. So DBGAP data is stuff that's supposedly potentially identifiable. There's a high level of, of security required, and it's a real pain in the neck to set up something that's accept uh, a place to store the data that's acceptable to them. And I was wondering if Terra is such a place. Okay. Um, so. One of, I believe, the data sets that Terra stores that does require dbGaP access is the TCGA data set, um, which Terra stores but also has the ability to connect to dbGaP so that you can connect your Terra account to your dbGaP authorization. So we have that uh, method in place. Um, there's a talk first thing in the afternoon where I talk a little bit more about security. Um, so we'll dig into that a bit more. 
I have a related question. If you have to put your data into dbgap, can we do it through Terra? Can you submit to dbgap? So I don't personally work with dbgap data, so I can't for certain say, but as long as the data exists in a cloud Google bucket somewhere, you can use the data in Terra. I want to submit to dbgap. I'm not sure. <laughs> So I have a question here, not from Lucia as well as Lucia. So if I, um, so my PI already uh, has a new project. So if I, uh, so do I need to request cloud access from them? So what you would do in Terra if you need to access dbGaP data is um, there's a link in it to allow you to connect your account to your dbGaP authorization. So you would do that. Uh, as far as the billing account, you can also link to your PI's billing account so that you can have whatever costs associated with the cloud go to that. <laughs> 